Hello, it is such an honor to be with you today to share my passion for teaching with a strong emotional intelligence and a success for all mindset. We often refer to social emotional learning with the SEL acronym, and it is at the heart of teaching with emotional intelligence. It is my hope today that I can highlight why SEL works for student achievement, how all our students benefit when we teach with the understanding that the threads of learning and achieving are connected with the authentic sense of belonging, trust, and confidence to take action for which SEL provides. We all want our children to grow in a compassionate, inclusive, and equity-driven classroom. In 1994, the group CASEL was formed to establish high-quality, evidence-based SEL as an essential component of a pre-K through 12th grade education. CASEL stands for the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. In 1995, when I was just a junior in high school, Daniel <laughs> Goleman, a co-founder of CASEL, released his seminal book, Emotional Intelligence. This book helped educators everywhere understand about the five domains of emotional intelligence, which are self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. It became clear to educators everywhere that SEL practices were needed in school curriculums. And as I was preparing for today, I was reminded of a personal teacher hero of mine, and perhaps you know him too, Mr. Fred Rogers. He had an artful way of using his emotional intelligence in his teaching and his advocacy. The way that he created his neighborhood of care through our television sets was a unique, brilliant, and oh-so-effective way. And if you were to visit my classroom on any particular day, you would likely hear his familiar songs being sung in my off-pitch and very Mrs. B way to gently and intentionally remind my students to take their time or to encourage them to do their best with their effort and practice. I absolutely believe in all of my students and they know it, but most importantly, they feel it. They actually write me notes to tell me so. And don't worry, I won't be singing for you today. <laughs> but I would like to explore why singing to my students would even matter. What difference is it making? Why wouldn't I just walk around my class quietly and stick to the teaching points of my lesson? These are all important wonders. And like any good teacher, I do the work. I collect and reflect with the data and the science. And I know my students. The reality is my singing is actually doing a lot of work to support each of my students' emotional and cognitive brain systems. Singing while they're practicing is comforting to my student, who's sitting with his peers, but he's struggling to engage with the work independently. I don't want him to feel singled out because he lives in fear of making mistakes. I know he needs practice with coping, and because I know this, and my goal is to ease his feelings of fear, I remind him that he can do it, not by singling him out, but by singing. And just like that, he feels supported and ready to try. And so, my singing works. Being attuned with my students works. And when social learning is explicitly taught, authentically modeled, and happily encouraged, our children learn and thrive. So, what does this look like in my classroom beyond just a small singing moment? Well, each day when my students enter our classroom, I'm there to greet them with a smile, and I always say their name with a hello. I watch them move about their morning routine, and I use my teacher's spidey sense to get a better idea about how they're feeling in order to anticipate and be responsive to their needs. And after everyone has arrived, we're ready to move forward, and we begin our morning meeting. But if a kiddo isn't with us on that day, together we'll all say, oh, rats, because we notice that they're absent, and we miss them. To a trained observer, my teaching intentions with our morning meeting routine would be apparent from start to finish, in 25 to 30 minutes, I've been able to incorporate all of Goldman's five domains for emotional intelligence and weave in reading, writing, math, social studies, science, and health standards. I wonder, what if all classrooms started their day establishing community that just started their learning together? Would student investment and achievement increase? Yes, I know it would. I believe to be a strong teacher and advocate for my students that I must never forget what it was like for me to be a student myself. I was a deeply sensitive and shy child, but I had a smart and striving ambition to achieve. I needed strong, emotionally intelligent teachers who would support the social curriculum and create safe classrooms where I could be vulnerable to try and fail. And data from recent surveys shows evidence to amplify support for the social curriculum. From the Pew Research Center, 93% of parents and caregivers want schools to embody empathy and actively teach social emotional skills. And as many of you here in the audience know today, our community's employers experience firsthand how important these skills are needed in the workplace. 
From the Wall Street Journal in 2016, 92% of surveyed executives say that problem solving and communication skills are equally or more important than their technical skills. So it's clear that classrooms need to be promoting and facilitating the emotional intelligence skills that will serve our children best as they learn to cope and communicate with an ever-changing and increasingly more diverse world. Recently, in the Bangor Daily News, the newly named Bangor Superintendent, Marie Robinson, shared her vision that students are way more than reading and math scores. She explained further by saying, my goal is to create an environment that is welcoming, inclusive, and allows all people, children and adults, to be empowered to reach their highest potential. I read her words and I thought to myself, wow, they have found a strong, emotionally intelligent leader. But some of the public comments made on social media showed obvious discomfort and even anger with her platform. But I'm confident that there are pathways that my colleagues and I can create that will help strengthen our par partnerships within our communities and grow deeper support for and advocacy for SEL. And I am passionately committed to doing that work. After all, the br brilliant Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. As educators, we can and we must be steeped in the best, most effective strategies to ensure that our students feel safe, capable, and have a sense of belonging and efficacy. We can continue to grow and evolve our practice by embracing free professional development initiatives like the one created by Maine's DOE Commissioner Kendra Macon in the fall of 2023. Her vision to have teachers well-trained and equipped in the regulated classroom will be transformative for Maine's children and for the future of our communities. It is only by weaving the social and academic curriculums together that we will create the most powerful learning opportunities for our children, thus empowering them with the confidence and the capability to achieve their fullest potential and their future aspirations. And I know that everyone here today in this neighborhood of care is cheering loudly for all of Maine's teachers and children to succeed. Thank you.